um, sharing the screen today with some, uh, looks like royalty of the coaching in our area. Um, I'll start to my left is uh, Coach Mike Barr. Um, congratulations, Mike. He's just got the Charlotte Moran Award. Excellent and well deserved. And Thank then you. moving counterclockwise, as is on my screen, um, Erica Dashback. And I said that wrong, probably, Erica. <laughs> I apologize. It's usually Erica Walsh. Um, what can I say about her? She uh, helps with a small team. I think it's the women's national team, I think. Um, a quite small state school, Penn State. Um, she's been Bucknell, Dartmoor, Lehigh, Harvard, and again, um, just to name a few where she's actually worked. Um, more importantly to us, she was a female player on a male's high school team at Upper Moreland. Oh, and so oh, I will I will correct that one. My last name I won't, but I'll give on. you the right high school. <laughs> go on, say it. Lower Moreland. I know I'm joking. Yeah. Um. So you'll know why because that. This, my information has come from Coach Oberholzer. So I have a few stories in the back pocket, and he said, do that, she'll correct you straight away. <laughs> um, and also, I think Coach Oberholzer was a co-coach with Coach Garber too. So Correct. you played there, and you also made um, All District or All State, I believe, or something like that. And Holy All Ghost. World in my mind. Yep, Holy Ghost said you were the most... Um, intelligent player they ever played against. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And then also we have Maddie Evans. Maddie is coaching at Westchester now, I believe, with the good Betty Ann. And she's played Boston, she played Penn State, Orland, uh, to name a few. And her claim to fame in my world is that she's from the actual metropolis of Philadelphia, but even more importantly, Glenside, where all my three children were born. And I think the coach of the union was born too. Oh, went up there. So again, played, played at Abington. The connection there was Coach Garber, who's also the male coach at Abington. And he also played for the wonderful coach, Coach Lee as well, growing up and won the national championship with FC Bucks too. And half of your team, I believe, beat one of my school teams as GA beat my team pretty badly, I think once or twice, which was a fair few of your teammates. So I won't hold that against you though. So that's who I'm with and I'm quite happy to sit back. I've got my cup of tea here ready to listen. And uh, I'll hand it over to Mike Barr to take the lead. Thanks, Mike. Okay. I'm going to talk to you first, Erica, if it's okay. Um, tell us where you grew up, uh, again, what high school, who your coaches were, your club teams, and any impact those coaches had on you. Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, obviously, I have a lot of connections growing up in Huntington Valley, Pennsylvania, in Montgomery County, and going through the Council Rock system um, from a club perspective. So played for Council Rock United for all my years under Jim Dunn, who was my early, obviously, a, a huge early impact on my life. And then um, in getting into my high school years, I unfortunately, Lower Moreland at the time, didn't sponsor a girls program. And so um, actually Jim Dunn's daughter, Katie and I uh, fought to play and start a girls program, tried to play for Upper Moreland. So Gary, you were ahead of your time with your, you know, and, uh, and uh, after two years of fighting, we finally, and a lot of cross country running and all different sports to try to pass the time. Um, I'm not a good tennis player. So that was, it was good that that got, got past me, but, uh, but yeah, in my junior and senior year, uh, coach Overholzer, John Overholzer, um, provided the opportunity to play with the boys team. And uh, again, he is an, an absolute legend in my mind, in his mind as well, but in my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, and 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 forward thinking in so many ways. You know, I think uh, at the time I was the only, Katie and I were the only girls playing in the league, playing against teams like Holy Ghost Prep. And, uh, and to be fair, I found that the boys on our team to not only to be extremely respectful, in the names of Brian Orloff, and we had some good players that came through our, our program, um, but also all the gentlemen on the other team. Um, I, I never had a bad bad moment in that experience, and certainly it propelled my game in, in so many ways. Um, and uh, besides John Overholzer, I had, um, you know, as you've discussed, Randy Garber was an influence as well. So, so many of these names, including um, the late Charlotte Moran, who through my coaching career, not only was a was a, an enormous impact in my 
um, EPYSA days, which I played ODP throughout my entire career, went on to coach in not only EPYSA, but also in Region 1 for many years under Sue Ryan. Um, Betty Ann Kempf is, it was also, so all of these names we've mentioned, um, I would attribute a, a large part of my success in coaching to, back to all those names. Um, just really good people and a passion for coaching uh, in a way that made it contagious for me and wanting to, to pay it forward. It's amazing how this network is so familiar to all of us, all these names. I think that's pretty special. Maddie, how about you? Your high school you played, um, talk about your club because I know it's a special one. And I was kind of surprised to see you were successful in lacrosse and running cross country and you set the 800 and mile record at, uh, what's your high school again? Abington. Abington. Okay, so why don't you tell us a little bit about those early years? Sure, absolutely. And I think you nailed it with so many of the names that uh, Coach just brought up. Still can't call her Erica, I still call her Coach, but uh, <laughs> so many of the names that Coach brings up are, are ones that uh, I'll end up bringing up as well. So, um, so I went to Abington High School. Um, I played soccer. My, uh, that was when soccer was still in the spring. So I played decided to play soccer my freshman and sophomore year um, and then wanted to make things interesting and decided to play lacrosse. Um, but had a good time representing uh, Abington during that as well, but most of my soccer was certainly through uh, both club and ODP. So um, with club, I grew up playing on um, local uh, boys team with uh, Ardsley North Hills. Um, but then found a, actually through playing an ODP, um, I was on the, the ODP team and I was like, where are all these really good players playing? And turned out a majority of them were on SC Bucks Vipers. Um, so I wanted to make that move. Um, played for Eddie Lee um, and Coach Oberholzer there. And those two really instilled or just fueled my passion for just playing, putting a ball down, playing, being creative, taking risks, um, really developed that part of my love for the game um, and found some of my, my best friends growing up in that environment. That's great to hear. Could you tell me a little bit more about Eddie? Um, as far as me being a coach, he's someone I always looked up to. I mean, his, his personality, his kindness, his caring about others. Did he have that type of impact on you too? Absolutely. I would say he was a, he was a father figure to most of or everyone on the Vipers. He was someone who, um, I mean, I just remember looking forward to practice so much. I'd be like in school and whatever I had after school was great, but then it was like, get to Vipers practice at night. And it was, he would always say uh, like two minutes left and we'd be like, no, like let's keep going. There was never, um, now I'm coaching in club and, and whatnot and everything's like, oh, you're at an hour, hour 15. It was just almost the, um, how unstructured it was lent to just this it was so fun um just getting together and playing and when he would hop in that's when it got really fun um no one could steal the ball from from eddie um same thing with uh obi when we were indoors no one could steal the ball from them um but just this joy around the game that certainly has carried through um, in all my years of playing, but no one, no one, no one like Eddie um, that I've ever been coached by. He's a great man. E Erica, um, so you matriculated to William & Mary, and then I would think this coach had an impact upon you too, your coach, John Daly. Yeah, and it, it, it's interesting because even as you just brought his name up, I got a little bit of goosebumps um, just thinking about his impact on my life. I even actually get a little teary eyed because um, at, at that point when I was, um, I certainly through my summers was coaching for PYSA, doing the camps every summer of my college days, but post-college, um, I was, my plans were to go on and to get a biology master's and to move on into the marine biology world. And by the time I was a senior, I had caught that bug a little bit more than I even realized. And uh, I would attribute that greatly to, to Coach Daly. Um, there's, I, I, I've never met anyone with more passion, not only for the sport, but also for his family. And we were his family and continue to be his family. Um, to this day, he is, uh, as Maddie said, a father figure uh, about Eddie. And um, he's a father figure, but also a very good friend and a confidant. 
and uh, is, is absolutely one of the main influences on my life. But, um, but beyond just being an influence, he, he gave me a passion and a love uh, that I didn't even realize that I had in myself as a player and instilled that confidence to go on into coaching. Maddie, what about uh, your college coach? Uh, what type of impact did uh, she have on you? Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's kind of amazing that uh, obviously I always felt like I had this cool connection with coach as well. Being from local areas, I practiced um, many of my in like with Obi, we were in her Lower Moreland gym a lot of the times. So I always felt like this cool connection to start that I felt like I had um, throughout my four years with her. But what's neat is I don't think when when uh, you go through the college selection process that you really think about um, when, whenever you choose a school, you're going to, I mean, I had four years with Erica, but now it's, I mean, I've had a relationship with her since 2008 now, and, and it's, I might just shoot her a text here or there. Um, always the person I would go to if I, if I'm making a decision um, soccer based, it's like this sounding board. Um, she obviously um, from a coaching perspective, now that I'm, I'm coaching, I never thought, Honestly, it wasn't really my path was I want to be a soccer coach, but um, when once you have a college coach like Erica and Ann and Tim um, and you see it for so much more than just coaching tactics and technique and all of that and this bigger picture people values based approach. It's like, OK, I want to get into this um, and just feel so fortunate that um, I have coach to to go to um, as a leader, as a strong woman, um, and someone who certainly, as, as we can see through this discussion, has had a very similar background um, growing up. And that relationship still continues, I take it, huh? Absolutely. She's stuck with me. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. You, you obviously start out as a um, scared freshman and intimidated and and then by the time you're a senior you still you still are a little intimidated but uh, you, you realize like this is a cool relationship that I have um, for for years and years to come and it was it was wonderful to celebrate the marriage of Maddie and, and her husband Brian who was a great Penn State player as well captain of their team and watching their relationship grow through those years and then reconnecting with Betty Ann Kempf at that wedding and just it, it all came full circle standing there with her parents just full of pride for for Marion just a, a perfect gentleman and uh, a wonderful partner for her uh, was just a really proud moment. It's great to hear I can see the smile on your face too Maddie. Uh, Erica you mentioned uh, I mean your success at Penn State is remarkable but you brought up the fact that you like the idea that it's more like a family to you um that the closeness between the team and their success uh correlates strongly but you like the idea of, of of a family as opposed to just looking at it as a team and wins and losses can you describe that i would love to describe it because it's certainly where my passion lies and and um i, I took the job at penn state with uh, actually, my college roommate, Ann Cook, who is uh, my closest closest friend and my confidant and also my moral compass. And when I asked her to take this job and, and uh, work with this program with me, um, it came along with an accountability piece of who we are and what we valued and the idea that it, it, it was not going to be a win at all cost even though we were going to one of the most successful programs in the country. And so how we could eventually marry family and academics first with this winning championship mentality and choosing a place like Penn State where you could you could combine all of those things so so first off it was finding the right university where you felt like your blue collar background really fits and second it was bringing the right people on the bus and Maddie Evans was one of the first um, and third was shifting that culture to understand that um, what what we stand for what our pillars are um, and then the final culminating piece was actually winning that national championship in 2015 and feeling that love for that senior that had played the least amount of minutes in her four years as we did for the Herman Trophy winner for the National Player of the Year. And, and that was certainly beyond winning a national championship, a point of pride way beyond just raising a trophy and, uh, and one we continue to strive for to this day. So Manny, um, 
if you heard of girls who were interested in playing at Penn State or had the opportunity to play at Penn State, would you highly recommend? Were there any drawbacks to playing at Penn State at all? Honestly, no. I, I would absolutely say if you have the opportunity, um, I think the word family, um, you bring it true. I think a lot of programs, teams kind of throw that word around lightly, and Penn State really doesn't. It really is. Even I'm how many years removed from the program, I still feel like I'm part of that that family, which is really neat. So um, you almost it's even even more so like as the years go by, they, they won that that national championship, um, and I felt like I won a national championship. It was like the 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 family piece is huge and i think that that part of it um and the way that um the program the coaching staff really do approach everything that they do with that mindset makes it that much more special that much more important it's so much beyond just soccer and then the results come and to be a part of that is really cool that's great erica would you mind uh describing maddie as a player a leader individual any uh quirks you may have or funny moments you can recall how much time do we have <laughs> um well one of the things that i'll share with you is uh over the quarantine period obviously your um you work to try to get creative right and and our pillars are attitude of a champion blue collar and united family and so finding those student athletes of our past that embody all of those qualities we reached out to a couple of our alums and maddie was the first one to come to our mind and to connect our current team with a couple of our alums that really um really get it you know and and and, and you don't always get it when you're in those four years and i'm not sure you're supposed to right because you don't know all the pieces that go into it but but once you go off and whether it's into your chosen field or go into coaching, you start to have a better understanding of all of the dynamics and the challenges that, that coaches face in making a decision. And, and what I always appreciated about Maddie is, um, is one, she always took a seek first to understand mentality. Even as a leader in college, um, when she disagreed with the decisions, um, she's gonna come into your office and she's gonna seek first to ask and, and, and help to understand but also have a strong enough mind to speak her mind and to lead her team. And, and we had so much respect for that approach because ultimately as educators, that's what we want. You know, I think all players think that their coaches want them to agree or always be on their side. And where I feel the, I, I feel as though the, the point of pride when a player really steps up and defends their position for their team and what they want out of their experience. And you're going, yes, even if you don't agree, yeah. you're going, yes, that is what we want out of our leaders. And that was Maddie through and through. Um, she was a, 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 an all around player. And I say this to these young players, Maddie could play every position and that is a compliment, but that is also a, men a mental challenge when you are in a position that you're moved around, right? That you're so versatile, that it becomes hard to, to find that craft of positionally being the right fit in any of them, right? And I think that for all players, um, for Maddie, she was so team first that coach, I'll play anywhere, right? But then as you refine your craft and, and she was looking forward to the pro league, she wanted to become more specialized and she did. And, and we kind of, we fit her into this, um, into this program and then she became the most important piece for our system in that incredibly reliable, um, used her voice and used her leadership to get the work out of her teammates, to inspire her teammates, but also in, uh, intelligent enough to guide them and show them what she wanted. Um, led by example, but uh, I, I, I honestly, and I'm glad she's on and she knows this, I cannot say enough about the young woman at 21 years old, but even how more proud we are at the young woman that sits with us today. Maddie, Erica brought up um, you playing professionally and uh, it, you coming out after three years and talking about the inequity within women's soccer was pretty amazing. Can you describe what it was like to play in Boston for $15,000 a year and try to survive? Yeah, so well, first of all, thank you, coach. That was awesome. Makes me want to hop back on Jeffrey and play. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, so playing pro, I mean, definitely I think stems right back to what I was kind of talking about in the beginning is I just, I love soccer. I love playing. I love competing. Um, and I, at Penn State, I, I felt like I was in an environment where I could get better every single day and improve my game. So when that pro possibility was even a little bit on the radar, I was like, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. Um, and I think what was really cool, I, I even remember a moment, it was in, in Haluba, we were in spring training and it was kind of like, I, I had made this decision. I wanted to go for it. I wanted to enter the draft, all that stuff. And I just had this immense support from coach and the coaching staff of like, yeah, like do it. And it was almost like, I don't know, maybe that little push that I needed. Um, and I think once I was there and I had finally, you know, signed that first contract for whatever it was, um, it was, I had, ever since I was little, I said I wanted to play pro soccer. Um, and so I kind of just really enjoyed that. And while I got further and further removed um, from graduating from, from Penn State um, and, you know, getting older and um, in my fifth year of playing and feeling like I had gotten so much already from that experience, I was, it was okay, maybe I could do something else. Sure. would love to make some more money. I would love to continue playing soccer for until I'm whatever. Um, but to finally play professionally, um, was really a dream that I'd always had. Um, and I felt like I tried to stay in as the mo in the moment as much as possible throughout those years and got met so many incredible people, built so many wonderful relationships, traveled all over the country, the world, um, a lot of fun. Okay, so Erica, are you finding more of your recruits now thinking about playing professionally much more than you did before the last five years? Is it, are they coming in there looking to play professionally? I would say now that they have role models within our country and they have a league that has been shown to be a bit more sustainable than the first two. Um, yes, and, and, and it is not necessarily um, a characteristic of our recruits that we're looking for, but it's certainly one of the questions, the first questions are, what are your goals and your dreams? And we use this analogy all the time, but I know going through college, I wanted to be a doctor, but I didn't want to go to med school, right? And, and that's where being a professional when Maddie talks about, I wanted to be a professional since I was a little kid of, of help keeping these players accountable that sure, we all have hopes and dreams and, um, but the amount of work that is required, um, I think pretty early on in a player's career, we want to really get a sense of, is that something you just dream about or is that something you're willing to go after? And, and Maddie was the perfect example, always the most fit, always the most trained, ready every day to set that example. And so whereas in this league, you've got players like Marta and the best players in the world, to me, this league still breathes and lives and dies off of the Matty Evans that are the, the, the heart of these teams. Um, you've got McCall Zerboni over in at Sky Blue. You've got some of these players at just the heart of this league that I think, um, you know, we need to continue to build up and, and lift up. It's nice to have, I think that women have the opportunities that men had for the last 30 years, but it's starting to come around. Uh, Maddie, I, I, I wanted to ask you about your experiences uh, in Brisbane, what it was like there. I mean, just to play professionally, but to get to Australia and play, I think that's kind of uh, special. Absolutely, it was definitely, uh, once I was in the league for a couple of years, it turned into a little bit of a bucket list item, was play somewhere abroad. And um, the Australian league is fantastic because it really falls perfectly in between the US um, schedules, so, or the NWSL schedules. So essentially that uh, my first year in Orlando had ended and then got right on a plane to go to Brisbane. Um, and it kind of was moving from one season into directly into another season, into another season. So it's like, it, there was no real break, but um, I loved that. And what was neat is a lot of each team had maybe two or three players from the NWSL on it as well. So um, you get to travel all over the, the country of Australia um, to play different home and away teams. Um, obviously, being away from home, but 
um, for, for a few months, but it was one of those things that was totally worth it. Obviously a beautiful country. Some of my best friends now, I would say, uh, live in Australia, which is tough, but it's pretty cool that soccer gave me these, op these opportunities. It's nice to hear. Um, real quick, Eric, I wanted to ask, with your reputation now at Penn State and the fact that you're involved with the national team programs, have you found recruiting to be a little easier than it was in the very beginning? Certainly, yes, um, but also more challenging in a way that I think that we've got this culture to the point where we are very protective of our family. So whereas talent has never been a shortage in, in women in our country and girls in our country, now we are looking well beyond the best players, right? And, and certainly if you can get the best people and the best players that fit our culture, great. But I would say as much as it's attractive to play for a coach with this type of national team experience, um, as I said, we are extremely protective of our family and, and that makes the decision making that much more challenging. But when you do put an offer or welcome somebody into your roster, it is, it's a big day for our coaching staff and you just pray that, that, that they say yes. So the interview and vetting process is pretty big. And that's not so much going out and watching them play and, and talking to other coaches. It's how you feel about them when they come in. Yeah, I would say identifying the talent is in many ways the easy part. You know, I think uh, I think what players don't recognize and understand is that it's many of the it's much of the stuff that they do off the ball. It's brilliant to have a great touch and be able to do things on the ball, but at this level, it's more about mastering spaces and an understanding and awareness of space and off ball movement. It's transition moments, and again, that's a little bit tough to to pick up in club games because if that's not a point of emphasis on your coach. Well, then can their mindset come around? Do they, are they sharp enough? Are they quick enough of mind to be able to pick up those concepts? And to Maddie's point about Eddie Lee is because they played, because they had this joy, it, it's somebody like Maddie and, and many of those, Jen Hoy and those players that came through, they had that in their game because um, there is something to be say about just roll the ball out and, and play and find those moments. So um, so, and, you know, and obviously the other side is just watching all of their mannerisms with their coach and their eye contact and their, as, as we're all doing, we know we're coaches, we shake our head, we reaffirm the conversation and, and that stuff matters to us as does social media and, and being respectful to, to play people and, um, and lifting up other people. Okay. Maddie, I'd be remiss in not talking about Westchester's program. Um, they've been experiencing a great deal of success. Betty Ann is well known throughout the country. Is her philosophy a lot like Erica's as far as family and the right players to look for? Yes, and I think something that Erica had mentioned earlier, I was like, well, that's something that I could hear Betty Ann saying is just um, really valuing the education side of, of, of coaching and teaching and um, looking at it as a bigger picture experience again. Um, so. Absolutely. And I think as I've now I'm in my fourth season at Westchester, which I can't believe it feel like I was just on um, the phone with Erica the other day trying to make my decision like, do I do this? Should I keep playing? Whatever. And um, I think it was one of those things that coming full circle really helped me um, getting that, oh, Betty Ann's connection with Erica. Um, just having all of these things kind of come together, it felt right. Um, and if it, those value system makes it so much when you're working with someone who values the family, the culture, finding the right people, obviously the soccer player piece as well, but certainly the same things. And I learn a lot from Betty and enjoy working with her um, and certainly seek common, common threads from a uh, coach as well. Down the road, do you see yourself as being a head coach at a college? Uh, maybe I, I, I uh, I'm really enjoying my role right now. Um, my, my focus right now is learn every day, get better as a coach every day. And fortunately I'm surrounded by some fantastic people who are helping me do that. Okay, Erica, here's your chance. Um, give me some memorable moments with Maddie, not necessarily something great she did on the field or anything else like that, but something that you'll remember, or maybe her teammates will remember for the rest of their lives. Where to start? Where to start? Um, well, certainly I would point back to um, 2012 
and when Maddie was leading our team and under our time, it was the first time that we had been back to the college cup and the championship in, in the same vein that Paula Wilkins had in her years at, at Penn State. So that was a, a huge hurdle for our staff because um, the program we inherited was so good <laughs> and we just wanted to frankly not screw it up at that point. So, um, so in the, um, in the semifinal game, uh, we got a great overtime win um, against, uh, we, were, we were going into overtime against Florida State. We had been up, um, or sorry, they had been up and, and we equalized and um, it, it, we were going into overtime. And as a staff, we were standing on the side trying to get our thoughts together, right? You only have a couple minutes. And we turn around and both Maddie and Christine Nairn have the group basically by the scruff of the neck and, and, and not physically, but um, took over the moment. And it was more of a not on my watch, not this time, not this team. This is our game. And this is a semifinal of the College Cup. And, and um, as I remember it, I don't think we even went over in that moment. This is a semifinal of the College Cup. And there is our captain doing everything that you would want a coach, a captain, a leader to do. And at that point, there was no doubt in my mind we were winning that game. No question. And, uh, and I felt sorry for Florida State, to be honest. Uh, so that, that was a moment. I'll give you a little uh, on the field. Maddie, you know, we laughed about this not that long ago. <laughs> and Maddie knows where this is going. Nobody could dominate a 360 on the ball like Maddie Evans. And, uh, and you think, what the heck is a 360? It's exactly what it sounds like. Somehow she just managed to, to twirl around the ball, not in any specific fancy move, but the, uh, the, the, your opponent would kind of fall down and then off she'd go. And it was very, it, 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 for us, we always got a laugh from it and we always talked about it, but apparently we had never shared it with Maddie. And so a couple of years ago at our camp, we got talking about it and Maddie goes, wait, what? And we said, yeah, you're 360, you know, your patented 360 move, the Maddie Evans, as we grew to call it. She had no idea what we we're talking about. So we got a couple of our other coaches on the phone. We called up Tim and said, hey, when you think Maddie Evans, what move do you think? Oh, the 360, of course, the 360. And Maddie just, just did this. She just shook her head. Um, so she bamboozled our opponents with her, with her 360. Obviously, you remember that, huh, Maddie? Now, what about Erica? Were there any funny moments with her? I mean, her reputation precedes her, but I mean, she has to have some flaws that you might have recognized over the years you were there, or something <laughs> that made you laugh. Well, something that I always, I, I still admire about Erica is she could be this like goofy, laughing, like funny, just coach, and then you get on the field, you're training, and you're working defensive stuff and you're like whoa and I think it's this crazy I mean to be able to balance how it how she does I really I want to figure it out um but to be able and I think it comes from the respect that that the players all have have with her is yeah we we can kind of have this relationship that we can kind of like make jokes and whatnot but then flip the script and be like all right we're training she's the boss we're getting after it we're working hard um, so a lot of my memories of, of coach are, are just like, um, especially later on, as you mature in those four years, as you move in your junior, senior role, as a captain, you feel more comfortable. Um, but, you know, creating that relationship as someone, as, as a friend, um, but then also just being completely dialed in and completely ready to get after it on the field and just learn. Um, so I think that that, and then of course there's her signature whistle, which I still can't get, but I think like, if I really want to be a good coach, I got to figure out the Erica Walsh whistle. That's funny because I'm still working on my whistle. I, <laughs> I could have been a much better coach if I just would have learned when I was young. Um, just a, a couple more things. Um, first of all, it's great to see the relationship you two still have. Um, Eric, I'll ask you first, I mean, a lot of these parents, especially when their kids are young, have these, this dream, their kid's going to play at Penn State, she's going to get a scholarship, um, and that's our goal. We don't want anything else. What would you tell parents about how to handle their children as they're playing soccer at the young ages? 
ha have fun. Just focus on having fun and, and your messaging afterwards, having fun. Give them a love of the game, um, uh, unlike any of the other kids around them. And uh, the more you can love the ball, love the game, love playing with your, your family, maybe siblings, um, and also really stay away with, with this idea of um, division one, division two, II, division three, right? It, it's more about their dreams. I want to go on and I want to play. I want to continue to play. I want to continue to have fun um, and to not get caught up in social media and the sweatshirt and the, the, the prestige. Because for, for me and for Maddie, it sounds like for me going to William & Mary, it was the right fit. It was who I am. It was what I was all about. And yeah, I wanted to be successful. But with only four years, I wanted to play. And that's where I have so much respect for some of these players that choose Penn State that don't get an opportunity to step on the field on Friday night is they do something I could have never done. I could have never sat on the bench the way that some of these players do. But because their whole life they dream about playing for Penn State, they are the right piece for our program. And they are incredibly unselfish. And they are the heart, just like I was talking about in the NWSL, they are the heart of our program but they do something every day that I personally could have never done because I knew myself well enough that I wanted to play. I wanted to play the minute I stepped in and I chose a program and my dad was very realistic. You know, don't go to Carolina if you want to play every day. You're not good enough. You're not good enough, right? Go to William and Mary and go beat Carolina, but become a very important player for them. And that thankfully I had good messaging from home. That was great advice. So Maddie, since you're still young, obviously, um, what made you choose Penn State and what other schools were interested in you at the time? So to be completely honest, growing up, I always said, I don't want to go to Penn State. I felt like all my teachers had all the Penn State everywhere. I was like, what is this Nittany Lion? I don't know. Now I'm totally that person. But uh, what got me comes back to the family word. Uh, I went on my visit to Penn State um, and I left with just this overwhelming feeling of, that's it. And now when I guide young student athletes trying to figure out this whole college selection process is everyone talks about that gut feeling. Um, I got the gut feeling at Penn State, um, even going into it with kind of this closed mind of, oh, it's Penn State. Um, I live in Philadelphia area. Um, but yeah, I was, I would look to, it was really came from, to me, it came down to UVA and Penn State. Um, so it's kind of always fun to play them, which was cool. Um, and, but Maryland, um, UConn, West Virginia, kind of m mostly Northeast schools we're looking at throughout that process, but it came back to the family gut feeling. And then, um, also I think it was really cool to, um, be coached by women as well. That was new for me. Um, and I think still is a huge highlight in my choice. Right. So the alumni connection to Penn State is pretty remarkable. And I think, uh, Penn State treats sports pretty much equally. I know football gets all the uh, accolades, but they seem to have a, a caring sense of, of all the teams, not just football or basketball. Anyway, listen, uh, this, this was unbelievable for me to talk to you too. You're the perfect uh, examples of why people should go to Penn State at this time. But not just that, that we have somebody like you two in Eastern Pennsylvania that we can look up to, me as a coach and, and players can look up to. Um, all I want to do is wish you good luck in the future. We'll be following you. And uh, thanks so much for being on. Thanks for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. Likewise. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Okay. See ya. Thank you.